Fair enough, uh, I'm not young, that's true. But uh, the abortion procedure hasn't basically changed over the last 50 years. Minor changes only. The purpose of the procedure to kill the baby remains the same as it ever was. The technique of entering the womb by dilating the cervix is the same as it ever was. The basic procedure has not changed over the last 50 years. The more recent use of medical abortion is an advance, is a change, but the end result is the same. The complications of bleeding, infection, retained products, these haven't changed. I actually agree with that. I think that uh, it does not come naturally for a woman to terminate her own child. That is not maternal, that is not uh, what women generally do. However, sadly, many women are coerced directly and indirectly into having a termination of pregnancy. They may be coerced by their partner, by their husband, by other family members. They may be misled by people who believe in error that termination of pregnancy is a minor procedure of little consequence and will have no long-term dangers to them, either physically or mentally. That is a serious disservice to women because it underplays the seriousness of the procedure, which they inherently know uh, is serious. Well, that is absolutely untrue. It is a complete and utter lie. There are complications following any surgical procedure. The complications may be short-term, long-term, physical, mental, spiritual. I have witnessed complications, serious complications, blood transfusion, massive hemorrhage, hysterectomy, pelvic abscess, septicemia. These are all complications which do occur. Maybe not commonly the serious ones, but uh, complications do occur. Well, that's absolutely untrue. Most of the terminations carried out for supposed fetal abnormality, in 90% I would estimate of those babies, they will live. A good example will be Down syndrome. Most children with Down syndrome live. They do have a number of troublesome conditions, sometimes including heart disease, but most of them will live. There is, however, a small group, and I would estimate 10% of all the babies terminated for fetal abnormality who have a condition in which it is inevitable that the baby will die. An example of that would be anencephaly, where the baby may be born alive, but will nearly always die within 48 hours. With modern science, the number of pregnancies in which the mother's life is seriously at risk are very, very few. There may be some rare cases, but they are rare. But I would refute that. I think that there will be some women who for a variety of reasons, their circumstances will change. For example, their partner or husband may leave them or they may lose their job and their situation changes in such a way that they feel they could not continue with the pregnancy. The other possibility is that with uh, amniocentesis, the diagnosis of a baby uh, to have its sex determined so that a mother who has already got two boys, doesn't wish to have another boy, will choose to terminate the boy in order to try for a girl later. 
sex selection uh, will be a real possibility in the future under the new law. Yes, absolutely they are applicable. If there is an increase in late-term abortions after the time in which the baby is viable, that is from 22 to 24 weeks onwards, then the abortionist either has to kill the baby while it is still in the womb, usually by an injection directly into the heart of a potent drug such as insulin or potassium, or there is a high likelihood that the baby will be born alive. Then the abortionist has a very serious dilemma because this was a baby that was supposed to be dead when it was born, but is now alive. How is that going to be dealt with? And the question then arises, how will we deal with this baby that was supposed to be dead? And the question of infanticide will inevitably arise. It is a real issue and will almost certainly be a problem if this new law is implemented. Well, the evidence is quite clear from the Abortion Supervisory Committee statistics that a very significant number of the mid-trimester abortions that are carried out using a surgical technique where the limbs of the baby are literally pulled off and the placenta delivered in the same manner. The reason for that is that the baby is growing and by 20 weeks the baby is the size of my hand and its head cannot be got out through the cervix dilated surgically. So it's a simple physical issue. Surgical abortion becomes increasingly difficult and increasingly dangerous as the baby grows. That is correct. Most of the abortions are surgical at the end of the first trimester. The reason for that is that the drugs, RU486 and Cytotec, are not as effective after nine weeks of gestation, particularly the RU486. Therefore, there are difficulties if you use RU486 and Cytotec after the end of the ninth week. It simply is not effective.